so this is this is my uh, new my new camper this is the front of it front looks really nice has one little dent uh, has a rub here in the bumper and it's got this little dent here on the hood uh, I don't know if I'm gonna repaint this whole thing or not usually my vehicles for my camping and and fishing I just uh, I go in the woods I get it all scratched up in the first month so uh, that's why I, this was a perfect perfect to find for me because it's crappy on the outside but uh, mechanically on the inside is just awesome you know it's so it's like a new car which is great you know for my camping thing because I don't care what the outside look like here's the other door as you can see I got some bugs here get out of here it needs cleaning I need to clean this whole thing because it's it's filthy but uh, but surprisingly the uh, the seats just have uh, absolutely no stain nothing so and that's all I care about these two front seats <laughs> uh, since uh, as you can see I'm guiding everything out I gotta cut all this away well, I'll just take a hammer and bend that in so I can because uh, I have no need for that so I'm putting my my plywood for my bed you know I gotta build a platform and uh, what else? I'm leaving these panels here on the door. I'm leaving that alone. Uh, it looks almost new. Actually, there's not a single stain on it. Nothing. So, I'm leaving that alone. And I'm leaving this alone, I think. I'm just getting rid of the stuff on the bottom, which is... Uh, uh, actually, no, I'll take this panel off. I might take this one off. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, but, the, uh, this is very easy to take off. It's all just pops. You just pull on it and it just all pops out. The easiest car, my goodness, my uh, my Buick to take anything off, everything is rivet. But that was cars in the, in the 80s. This is 2002, so they finally learned the lesson that everything is just on these little little snaps like that, little clips, and you just pull and everything comes off. I think there was one screw in here, and that was the only screw. And there was a bunch of screws on the. Uh, there's a bunch of screws here on the bottom holding this little thing, which I'm not even putting in the back here, this thing. I I don't care about stuff like that. I'm eliminating everything, trying to make this thing as light as possible. Because believe me, these seats and the carpet alone, because the carpet's got like a thick felt, as you can see here, and that felt is so heavy. It's not like a... It's not like a spongy, this is like hard felt and it's, even this is so heavy, this weighs like 20 pounds alone, because it's, uh, the carpet's got a rubber underneath. So the seats were at least uh, 80 pounds each, then when the carpet are ripped out, that was another 80 pounds. And by the time I remove all this thing, I'm going to lose 300 pounds on this vehicle, so that's even better. Well, of course I'm going to put uh, <laughs> more shit in it, but still, you know. It's better than keep that stuff in and then, then try to sleep and put all my junk on top of it because then it would be uh, even more uh, more weight uh, another thing uh, I found on Craigslist is a uh, receiver hitch here that I'm gonna bolt on uh, found one for 50 bucks uh, made it by Kurt but it gets 4th of July today is uh, July 4th so the guy said uh, I, I'm, I'm busy with the holidays so I'll meet him on Monday and pick it up for 50 bucks. It's originally almost $200. I buy everything of Craigslist uh, used so you save money. And uh, But the main reason we got this van is so we can actually travel and explore places where we want to retire. We're going to be retiring soon. And what we want to do is uh, sell the house, sell everything. And move into full-time RV. We're basically doing that in two years. So we're buying an RV like a 24 small RV 24 maybe 26 27 footer selling everything and moving into RV and just gonna travel for you know 10 years 20 years whatever just live off live on uh, boondocking live on uh, state land live on uh, you know national forest and then campgrounds and RV parks just uh, just go month to month stay one month in this town move to another month to another town stay another month and just hop around to see the whole United States because that's the way to see it. It's it's to me it's very depressing when I go on vacation. 
because uh, I love especially Northwest uh, like Seattle area the whole Cascade Mountains I'm a fly fisherman obviously you see from my videos I love that area and every time I go there all I do is count days I got only five days left I got only four days left it's just it's depressing and I have to go back to work so no more I'm gonna I'm gonna freaking fish my ass off and if I want to stay a month or if I want to stay six months in there in the summer so so be it that's what I'm gonna do so this was another part of this van we want to go and explore first in the van instead of driving an RV some of the nicest spots for next two years we'll be traveling a lot uh, short you know one week here one week there you know and then uh, see the places we want to go when we have an RV uh, and see what it's like out there boondocking on the BLM land and all that stuff so but this is uh, but also you know going in the cities and stuff for weekends you know I like to take a Friday off and three-day weekend and and then go up uh, we love Boston and go up in Maine and stuff and just uh, just urban camping stealth camping you know and this is what's nice about this van this looks like a normal VME van you close this thing and uh, of course I'm gonna black out the windows and stuff so which was another consideration buying a small camper like a class B camper or a conversion van you know people know you sleeping in it this thing looks like a minivan it's basically a minivan but it's the squarest biggest minivan you can buy because most minivans as you know it's are all rounded and stuff so there's limited room inside where this thing is uh, is so square it looks like a cargo van actually the cargo vans are more more rounded than this one is so it's 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 pretty much the biggest van that it's still classified as a minivan which is another reason we bought this thing actually we I, I was set on buying a E150 Econoline uh, conversion van in uh, in Harrisburg Pennsylvania a beautiful conversion van still for sale for three thousand dollars hundred twenty thousand miles on it but old people had it in Florida no rust actually mint condition so I was gonna meet him on Saturday and in the morning and get the title transfer get new plates and stuff and everything and then I I have my insurance with uh, e-surance it's the one that has a letter E in front of it well I go to freaking insure this thing they said no I need a commercial insurance on it because it's a uh, it's built on the account line E150 Ford so what happens is basically these conversion companies they buy these uh, vents and they're just cargo vents and then they convert them they put seeds they put because that one had a bed in the back and but the VIN number still shows like it is uh, basically it still shows a cargo van so when you go insure it it comes out at least with the insurance and they said we're sorry don't insure this thing under normal policy even though if I say it's for personal use or just pleasure they don't care because the VIN number shows that the vehicle is commercial so they said I need to get a commercial insurance it was 600 bucks a year it was full coverage on this thing and then liability only on this one and I have 300,000 100,000 uh, policy on it and it was uh, 305 I added this vehicle my insurance jumped to 338 so jumped uh, 35 or 34 dollars for six months that's all it cost me to add this van the Econoline line van was six hundred dollars it was a six hundred years six hundred six sixty almost a year it was three hundred thirty and change something so it was almost the Econoline line was as expensive as all these three vehicles combined just to insure one with a freaking different policy so and of course I called the uh, Geico progressive insurance uh, Mutual Liberty and Nationwide. I got five quotes and it were all about 350. Well, actually Progressive and Geico was almost $500 for that Econa line uh, For just six months. So so it was almost thousand dollars a year for insurance where this thing is costing me $70 per year because it's $34 every six months So this is another reason why I bought this thing because this one the VIN number reads a passenger minivan